Welcome to worship. My name is Susan Bresser, and I am the pastor of First United Methodist Church in Whitewater, Wisconsin. It is an honor uh, that you are joining us today. What a privilege for me. And even though we are separated by distance, we are held together by the Spirit of God. Thank you for being in worship with us on this day. Much thanks to Joe Sherman, Broderick Fry, John Fry, and Chuck Taylor for their gifts in connecting us virtually. We are indeed very, very blessed. And much thanks to these worship participants, our liturgists Donna and Aaron Vosberg, our musicians Jim Athos and Christine Hayes, and our special music today comes from Josh Oganoff. Today is our consecration celebration when we celebrate the commitments made on behalf of the church and our pledge to help grow the kingdom of God here on earth. If you have not yet returned your pledge card, please do so at your earliest convenience. If you need a pledge card, please contact Jane in the church office. In next week's worship service, Dave Gamble, our stewardship chair, will share our stewardship results. The response, by the way, of folks returning their commitment cards, their pledge cards, has been very positive and really fantastic. So thank you. Thank you to all who have been able to return your pledge card. Again, if you have any questions, please contact Jane in the church office. Many things are happening in the life of the church as we prepare for Advent please pay particular attention to the weekly messenger providing you with details of what's coming up. Next week in worship, we will recognize and honor and celebrate Beth Staniforth Seamster. Beth, as we know, is our children's ministry coordinator, but she has um, claimed a new title these past couple of weeks. She is a seminary graduate. So we will honor and recognize this accomplishment as we celebrate with her in next week's worship service. Please watch for a special letter from our staff parish relations chair, Julie Duval, on um, inviting you all for contributions for a special mission to honor Beth's seminary completion. So we look forward to that next week. The week following will be the first week of Advent, uh, and then four weeks after that will be Christmas. So we do have a lot to celebrate, a lot to recognize, and a lot to honor. I am grateful that you are with us in worship today. I thank you for everything you do to support the Church of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your gifts and your prayers. Thank you for your witness and your service. And thank you for your presence even from a distance. You are missed. You are loved. You are held in the embrace of a loving God. I pray that our time together on this day will provide strength for our journey of faith, and I pray that our time together will provide hope in these extraordinary times. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. and let it be consecrated Lord to thee take my moments and my days let them flow in ceaseless praise take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let it sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite 
Hello, my name is Donna. Hello, my name is Anne. And we will be sharing the call to worship with you today. Peace to you, my sisters. Peace to you, my brothers. Peace to you, too. Love to you, my church. Love that grows with faith. Love to you, too. Faith to you from God the Creator and Jesus Christ the Son. Uh, faith to you, too. Grace to you and grace to all who love God and God's people. And grace to you, too. Welcome to worship. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us so many blessings. You are the God of creation, the creator of all that is visible and invisible. Forgive us for those times when we turn our backs on what your hands have made. We focus our minds so that we will once again be good stewards of what you have created. We praise you as we marvel at the majesty and splendor of your creation. May your praise lead us to good to be good stewards. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us so many blessings. Amen. 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 bring to worship on this day my pledge card, my commitment card. 
When we are together in normal times, especially during this, this time of stewardship, we invite you all to bring your pledge cards to worship and to bring them forward and to lay them on the altar so that we can ask God to consecrate our gifts and to, and to bless our pledges. This card that I have today will represent all the commitments made to support the church and the ministry of Jesus Christ in this coming year. I'm going to invite you to be in a manner and an attitude of prayer as we ask God to bless our commitments, to bless our pledges, and to bless the promises that we are making on this day. Let us pray. Creator of all, the earth is yours, the world and all who live in it. You have entrusted us with gifts, time, talent, energy, money. And you have asked us to use these gifts to build your kingdom. With thanksgiving, God, we respond to your call. We bring our commitments before you as these cards represent our lives, our hopes and our fears, our dollars and our hours. We commit ourselves to the work of your kingdom, a world without end, to love and serve wherever you call. The pledges and commitments we make on this day are but tokens of the awesome gifts that have been given to us, and they are pledged in thanksgiving for all we have received for all we have been inspired to be, and for all we are challenged to become. We ask for your blessing on these commitments, our investment in your future. We ask for your blessing on these commitments that they may multiply in faith, hope, and love. Amen. <laughs> A reading from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. Always be joyful and never stop praying. Whatever happens, keep thanking God because of Jesus Christ. This is what God wants you to do. May God add a blessing to this reading and to our understanding. Amen. Heal 
the sick and free the soul. Use the love your spirit kindles still to save and make us whole. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be God. God. Let us pray. God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be open to know your truth and your way. Amen. Today marks our Consecration Sunday or our Celebration Sunday as we offer our financial and our service pledges for the year ahead. Our church will live into the next year with the decisions we make today. And we do so with the values we hold dear. Intentional faith development, passionate worship, inclusive hospitality, extreme generosity, and selfless mission and service. We believe these values call us to action. As we move into the new year, the church might look a little bit different, but the values are still the same. So thank you. Thank you for holding fast and dear to these values. Thank you for recognizing God's abundance and living into and out of that abundance. Thank you. Thank you for your practice of faithful stewardship. Today also marks an end to a sermon series inspired by Barbara Brown Taylor's book, An Altar in the World, where Taylor takes ordinary experiences of being human and creates spiritual practice out of them. The Finance Committee, in choosing this theme and this focus, thought it might be good to remind us that God's presence is everywhere especially during this time as we are separated from our church family and separated from our normal church routine. We as God's people are encouraged to live into God's presence. So today, with that focus, we cover the last two spiritual practices. The eleventh practice is the practice of being present to God. In this practice, we are invited to explore these two possibilities of prayer. That prayer is more than just my idea or your idea of prayer. And that some of what I actually do or what you actually do in our lives may constitute genuine prayer. I've been asked this question often. When I pray, what am I supposed to say? Pray without ceasing, Francis of Assisi advised. If necessary, use words. If God knows us inside and out, then there is often no need for words at all. The most important thing is the awareness that we are not alone. 
And if we are truly not alone, then the communication flows both ways. Prayer is waking up to the presence of God no matter where we are or what we're doing. And there is a difference between prayers and prayer. Prayers are important, saying set words at set times, like our prayer of grace before we eat a meal, or a prayer of gratitude when waking up or before falling asleep, or the prayers we say in worship, the Lord's Prayer, the opening prayer, the prayer of confession. Prayers are important. A prayer at the start of the day can help center ourselves on the presence of God in our lives. A prayer of grace before a meal reminds us of, of the simple blessings in our lives, but also the abundant blessings in our lives. And prayers in worship are a beautiful way to practice solidarity. But prayer can go beyond this. When we are fully alert to whatever or whoever is right in front of us, when we are aware of the gift of being alive, when we are able to give ourselves to the moment we are in, then we are in prayer. Prayer is happening because God is happening. Prayer is being awake to the presence of God in all moments of life. I really, really like that. Prayer is happening because God is happening. The name of this practice is being present to God, not the practice of God being present to me. The name of the practice is being present to God, not the practice of God being present to me. God is always happening. But do we always recognize that? Does prayer work? I guess that all depends on how you would define work. I keep a notebook of things I hold in prayer. Mostly people, but also events and celebrations and sufferings. This practice of prayer, in a way, defines and describes my theology and my Christology, which are just big words for how I see and experience God and the presence of Christ. I experience the divine in relationships. So my notebook is full of relationships, names of people I love, people I know, People I kind of know, people I don't know at all, but others know, and certainly God knows. A couple years ago, someone discovered my notebook because I had left it in the church library. And she asked, what is this? What do you do with this? And I told her that it's my prayer book. Her response, but there's no prayers in here. There's just a list of names. How does that work? I don't know. It's not a very theological answer, is it? I don't know. I don't know how it works. But I trust that it works. C.S. Lewis said, prayer doesn't change God it changes me. Prayer doesn't change God. It changes me. Is the point of prayer to ask God for particular outcomes when God alone knows what's right? For me, being in prayer or offering prayers is to let it go, whatever it is, to let go, to let go of the control and allow God to be God. I will never ever tell you that that is easy, but I will tell you that it's exactly what I need. Prayer at its best and at our best 
helps us to live intentionally and compassionately. Because I am not stronger or more self-sufficient or smarter or braver or more religious than anyone else. I need this help. As long as prayer helps me to be more loving, then I need prayer. As long as prayer serves as a powerful means of sharing love with others, I need prayer. Prayer is not about winning God's attention. Prayer is never about saying the right words or having the right posture. Prayer is not about location. It is not about the practice of God being present to me. It's about the practice of me being present to God. Because God is always happening. Prayer is a response to that. Our twelfth and last spiritual practice in the practice of twelve is the practice of pronouncing blessing. It is not just in crisis that God calls us to share blessing and to be a blessing to others, but it's pretty clear that that's what we need now more than ever. We need to start throwing blessings around like confetti. I kind of stole that. The real quote is, throw kindness around like confetti. And that's important too. But for the sake of this spiritual practice, we need to understand and, and maybe even believe that we can throw, we can throw blessings around like confetti. Barbara Brown Taylor makes this claim. A blessing does not confer holiness. And that's important to hear. A blessing does not confer holiness. Holiness. This is the truth, and this is rich. So hear these words. Holiness is already there. Nothing, no creation of God needs our help to make it holy. <laughs> because God made these beings, be it mosquitoes or people, <laughs> trees or stink bugs, they share in God's own holiness, whether or not they meet our requirement for a blessing. There is no impressive logic behind this reasoning. The only logic is that all life comes from God. Our judgment has no place in blessing. We cannot bless someone only when we, when we think they deserve it. If that were the case, none of us could ever bless or be blessed. A, bless does, a blessing doesn't say, I bless you, but I hope you change. <laughs> Rather, a blessing says, I see you and receive you. I embrace you and accept you for who you are. A child of God, made in God's own image. Taylor's argument in this practice is that we all need to be doing the blessing every day, all the time, throwing blessing around like confetti. The, the power in pronouncing blessing is in the acknowledgement and the awareness. When you acknowledge something, when you really see it, it's hard to unsee it. If we believe we have been blessed, then we must offer that blessing to others. If we believe we have been blessed, then we must offer that blessing to others. Taylor ends the chapter with this, and I agree. The world needs you to do this to offer blessings because there is a real shortage of people willing to stop wherever they are and recognize holiness. And I add, you, me, we, we are the hands and the feet and the heart and the body of Christ. If we believe this to be true, then this is how we are to live. 
Stewardship is everything we do after we say, I believe. In our stewardship focus, we have highlighted 12 different spiritual practices. Waking up to God, paying attention, wearing skin, walking the earth, getting lost, encountering others, living with purpose, observing Sabbath, carrying water, feeling pain, being present to God, and pronouncing blessings. These practices overlap like a glorious Venn diagram. They aren't separate practices. They are connected. In these days of uncertainty with COVID cases on the rise, as well as the number of those dying from COVID is on the rise, we need to be connected. We need to be connected to a loving, caring, compassionate God. The God we believe in, the God we worship, the God who is always present. Because God is always happening. If we believe we have been blessed, then we must offer that blessing to others. May it be so for all of us. Amen. I do invite you to be in an attitude of prayer. Your manner of prayer may not be my manner of prayer. Your posture of prayer may not be my posture of prayer. But I do invite all of us to be in an attitude of prayer as we receive a blessing. In this season of illness, distancing, and death, we bless those who bear light, healing, and hope. Blessed are the joy finders, the joy sharers, the joy tenders. Blessed are the mask makers, the mask wearers. Blessed are those foregoing convenience and excess for someone else's survival. Blessed are the essential workers. The healthcare workers, sanitation workers, grocery store workers, mail carriers, truck drivers, farm workers. And also blessed are these essential workers. The poets still feeling, the dreamers still imagining, teachers still sparking curiosity, students still soaking up and sharing wisdom. Caregivers still caring, journalists still investigating and reporting. Blessed are the music makers, the art makers, the word makers, and the meaning makers. Blessed are the letter writers, the card senders. Blessed are those connecting virtually, and blessed is the bandwidth that never leaves anyone out. Blessed are you in your tears, your prayers, your fears. Blessed are you every moment you choose tenderness, softness, gentleness, kindness, and care. Blessed are you in your living. Blessed are you in your loving. Blessed are you even in your fearing. And blessed are you in your dying. Blessed are you, child of God. For God is with you always. You are never alone. Amen. Cheese, my
I do invite you to be in an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. With all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we draw near to you, God. We draw near to your presence with our praise and our petitions. We pray, God, that you will hear our prayers. Today, we pray for the church. We give thanks for the gift of the body of Christ, a tapestry of believers from all over the world. But we also give thanks for all people of faith, for all who are drawing closer to the divine presence. We pray for grace and insight to celebrate what brings us together. And we pray for forgiveness when we choose to focus only on our differences. Generous God, we pray that you will hear our prayers. We pray for your creation. We give thanks for the world and its abundance beyond measure. We pray for insight as we fulfill our responsibilities as its caretakers. And we pray for forgiveness for times when we have taken these blessings for granted. We pray for protection for all living things, especially those living things that are in danger. Generous God, we pray that you will hear our prayers especially as we pray for community. We give thanks for the gift of this community, for our faith community, and we give thanks for the many ways that we are in connection with other communities. We pray for tender hearts as we interact with our neighbors. And God, we pray for forgiveness for times when we are involved in the tearing down of community rather than building it up. We pray for protection for those in our community and the world who have been exposed to the coronavirus. We pray for comfort for those in our community and the world who are suffering. We pray for peace for those who are dying and strength for those who are grieving. And God, we pray for strength to persevere during this time of uncertainty. Generous God, hear our prayers as we offer all that we have and all that we are to you. With the confidence of the children of God, we join together in praying the prayer taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our mission into the world. When I leave this place, I am going into the community where people need a kind, caring, encouraging word, and God's sending me to get the word out. The joy and peace in this life comes in sharing what I have received. So I go in peace to experience the joy in the name of the living God who lives in Jesus and who empowers me to be a witness through the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May you know God loves you and gives you peace. Go in faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.